Hey, what's up everyone? On today's episode, what I want to do is I want to go through my filtration area, uh, my cabinet, what's inside it, and uh, then give a little update on the tank. So let's get on with it. And my sump itself is a 20 gallon breeder. I purchased it at a dollar sale through Petco and it works really good for what I want at the moment. In the future, I want to upgrade to a 40 gallon breeder, get a little bit more room in each compartment and uh, allow me a bigger refugium, a little bit more room to work, or work in the uh, protein skimmer area and also a little bit more room in the return area. My first stage is my protein skimmer. I have done a review on this in a two-part video, so if you need to know uh, any details regarding that, you can check that out. It's an SCA302. During the video uh, review, I upgraded to the Logic Cup and a silencer. The silencer is working out great and makes this skimmer run virtually quiet. Um, there's no ambient noise coming from the skimmer anymore and that usual sucking sound you hear through the airline. It sits on a stage that I just put together with some egg crate and some zip ties. Uh, you can actually see right here, my system is does have a load of brittle stars in it and they sit under this stage and just look for whatever comes into this compartment. Uh, forgive the dirt that's in it or detritus that you may see because um, this is due for cleaning and it's just a matter of getting around to it. The only other thing that's in this area is the return line itself and that's it. The one thing that I go by with my sump is now I run it very minimalistic. Um, I used to have every reactor in the world, you know, I used to run a separate GFO and a separate carbon um, reactor. I got away from that and then I went to bio pellets. Um, mixed emotions about it while I was seeing I guess a little bit of improvement I really didn't know what they were doing for my tank so I took that offline and decided to run this and this has been running this setup for about a little over a year now and I have no complaints about the results so the middle compartment is my refugium it right now has great calerpa and uh, chato I did do a water change uh, a few days ago and thinned out the Calerpa a lot. This compartment was literally, literally filled with Calerpa. So I wanted to thin it out and give it a little bit more chance to grow um, and take out some more nutrients out of the water. So a lot of people have mixed emotions about trying this out. They're afraid of it going asexual and yellowing, yellowing the water and uh, taking whatever nitrate and phosphate that it absorbs and releasing it. I have not experienced that and like I said I've been running it in my system for about a year now. Uh, the re the, it outgrows the Chato by leaps and bounds. This Chato really hasn't grown from this size since I got it. Uh, I have it sitting under basically just a drop light with, with an LED bulb um, and it's strong enough to grow things because the Calerpa does grow in it, but the Chato just doesn't seem to take off. I have it because it provides a shelter for my pods and that's really its function. In the back are my heaters. They sit in my second stage because in case there is a failure and this section runs dry, this one will not. So therefore these heaters will never be sitting out in open air and fry and fail and release electricity into the tank. <coughs> Excuse me. The one on the right is an Aquion Pro 100 watt heater. It's been in this system for uh, a year and it was in my other system for about a year. So I'm getting ready to change this one out uh, with heaters. It's not a matter of if they're going to fail, it's just when they're going to fail. Now, from my experience, a year and a half to two years is a life cycle on these things. So I'm going to be changing this one out shortly. 
I had one, um, <clears throat> another Aquion Pro, but that one failed. So I went out and I purchased the Finex, which you see here. This is the that's the one with the stainless tube. Um, it's connected to a controller that governs when it goes on and, and off. Right now I have it set for 80 degrees. Since I run an open top tank, um, my tank, my display tank will run um, a few degrees colder than my refugium will run and my sump. So that's why I have that on 80. My tank sits at, is on 78.1 right now. I'm very happy about <clears throat> the Finex. I actually saw a review of that and the reason I went with it was because of uh, a bulk resupply video. So uh, if you swing over there and check that out, you can learn more about that heater. In the third stage, <clears throat> I have just a piece of filter floss that cleans the water and a return pump. The only other thing I have in this compartment, my return pump, by the way, is uh, the flow on this is a little over 1,000 gallons an hour, but with head pressure knocks it down to about uh, 900 and change. So that's good for my tank. The other things I have sitting in here are my float switches for my JBJ Auto Top Off. I've owned this and I picked this up actually second hand from a fellow reefer and it's been working in this system and my older system without a problem. The only thing that you have to do with these guys is <clears throat> make sure that you clean the float switches so they don't stick. And I do that on a regular basis. Okay, here's my one that this the first probe here will set my water line, which I marked. And the second one is a backup in case the first one fails and it starts filling up with water. When it hits this one, it will shut down the pump. Uh, this is my drip my drip line for my um, top of water and calc washer mixture. Uh, I've gone through that in another video, so you can check that out. And now let's move over to the quarantine section. Okay, so this is my quarantine tank. It is another 20-gallon breeder from Petco. Um, and I have a Penguin 150 bio wheel hang on the back filter. Well, the only thing I put in that is some filter floss and some carbon the it's just uh the only other thing i have in here is some pvc for hiding and then jbo uh it's the rw4 it's a small one i just use it to in conjunction with the penguin to supply to supply surface agitation and get some oxygenation in the water i don't run a heater in this tank simply because since i set it up and it's been up for quite a while now my temperature is sitting towards the high side of the green so right now I don't need a heater on it and plus the only other reason I don't put a heater on it is because as you can see it is an empty tank but when I do um, I am planning to add some fish soon so I'll do a big water change on this throw the bubbler on it and double check my heat and make sure everything's constant so that there's no further stress on the uh, fish that are in it. <clears throat> as far as the stand goes, it's you can find these plans for these stands all over the internet. It's basically 2x4 construction and it's made to hold a large weight on top of it. One thing I did when I um, built this stand is I made it to grow with me so I wouldn't have to change the stand itself on my tanks um, and it's worked out really well I could actually get a larger tank than my 90 on here and it'll hold it just fine so um, the only other thing I have in my cabinet is various medications if I need it um, my bottle of revive and that's basically it for the this underneath. Let's go up and I'll give you an update on the tank itself. So starting off, um, 
My control on my system is the Reef Keeper. Uh, I have it just to basically monitor my temperature and pH and um, also the control. It allows me easy control for my return pump, my auto top off, my skimmer. Uh, I don't have alerts set on it, but one day I'll get into that and look further into as far as you know using some more of the control functions the tank itself there's a mix of good and bad in it uh, the frog spawn still being inhabited by my clowns they're hosting this thing and they will not leave it since I moved the anemones over here she has gone over and checked him out my other one from you could tell from the last video has moved to the back and I've noticed my back area of my tank is a little darker than the front and that anemone back there has changed color to a little darker orange while this one stays bright so that's about that with them Moving across, the torch coral is doing better and better every day. My pagoda, I moved it to here where it was originally. Uh, the only reason I moved it was because the hammer coral, I put it over there. I moved the hammer coral to a better spot on that rock and it allowed me to move my pagoda back into place and just, the heads are now starting to come out more and more. So hopefully that will fill out again the way it used to be. My purple candy canes in the back are really doing good. More and more of the gold bands that are coming out around the head and the uh, inside where the mouth is, is turning brighter green every day. Fungia plate, still not growing. My A cans, you can see more of the heads coming out. So that's really doing well. The Zoas, the purple zoas are opening more and more and they're just they just keep growing thank goodness you can see the from the last video the two heads that had just formed on the utter chaos in the back are now more visible this neon green candy cane is getting bigger every day Sliding to the right, right, uh, left, ooh, sliding to the left <laughs> is Mushroom Central. Just mushrooms all over the place. I do want to figure out how to frag these and start thinning out this rock with these mushrooms. They, they just keep, they grow huge. You can tell by the size of that. And... That's about three, four inches across. The green pallies are doing well still, even though they're butted right up against the mushrooms. This Hollywood Stunner is growing more and more. And you can see, if I can clear it up just a little bit, the fingers are starting to get eyes on them. So I'm really excited about seeing where that goes from there. It's in a low part of my tank. So as far as light, it gets it gets light, but not as much as I would have thought it would have needed it to get to grow. My Duncans, I've moved them to this rock. They're at the height where they used to do really well. So I'm hopeful that they'll open more and more, but one reason why they're closed this much is I had them here and the Black Honest Clown beat the heck out of it. So that caused them to close up again. I'm hoping over here, she'll leave them alone. The purple Stylophora is still growing well. And that leads us to our next disaster. 
this rock right here fell because this section is not glued and crushed the red digitata. Now the reason that hopefully that's a happy disaster is that I've filled out my return with a bunch of the frags and even though they look white on here there is more and more polyp extension come, going on. Um, so we'll just have to see how, where that goes from there. That frag has good polyp extension on it and that one right there but hopefully these these frags will live and start taking off. The purple digi, which is right here, it's growing the best out of anything I have, really. Um, the tips are white and purple. You can't really tell by this camera. But what you can see is uh, right here, these polyps, which are purple under the itinix, these right here are neon green and also these right here. Now the only change I've done in my system is I've started uh, feeding Reef Nutrition oyster, oyster Feast. So maybe that's to blame for that. I don't know, maybe it's the, the new lights. But I am liking the way it looks, especially with the blues on. Fish-wise, the fish, no change. They're eating like horses and healthier than ever. Uh, the powder blue tang, who just disappeared on me, is doing really good. There he is. And it's still the main attraction for me in my tank. The clownfish, you have an update on. My cleaner shrimp rarely come out with the whites on, but they're back in there and they come out. Let's see if I can just shot it on them. They come out at night and they'll sit on top of the rock. Other than that, the blue hippo is getting bigger and bigger. And now I'm missing my mollies, but I know that they're in the rock somewhere. So, but they're doing well. Okay, that's about it. Um, a future episode I'm going to be reviewing... Um, the Jabo CP25. I'm holding that review off until some time goes by because my I like to give my review on something that I've used over time. I will also be doing a review on my two uh, Chinese black box LED fixtures and that pretty much takes care of it. Right now I'd like to thank the people that have subscribed to me. Uh, I'm sitting a little over 90 subscribers and I'm th I thank every one of you. For taking part in the channel and enjoying the content. If you've got any questions or suggestions or anything you want to say, leave it in the comments below. I usually get back to anybody who comments on the video fairly quickly because I have the alerts set on my phone. And that takes care of this episode for me. Um, see you next time. This is Scott. And I'll see you next time around the reef tank.